All right, guys, we are going to go through the notes for Chapter 3, Section 4. This is on respiration and fermentation. Um, you should have gone on to Schoology and made a copy of the note document. Um, it's fill in the blank notes like we normally do, so you can follow along with this video, um, or you can use the slides that are in today's folder as well. So um, we have been talking about photosynthesis. Um, and how that works and how plants capture en um, energy from the sun and convert that into food. And so respiration is um, essentially the opposite of photosynthesis with what it needs to use and what it produces, but it's part of a cycle um, that's connected with photosynthesis. So food supplies your body with glucose, um, which we know is an energy rich sugar, which is a form of a carbohydrate. And respiration then is defined as the process by which cells obtain energy from glucose. Um, so they take that sugar and they use it to create energy they need, and then they produce different um, materials like photosynthesis produces oxygen, um, respiration is going to produce carbon dioxide. So during respiration, the cells are going to break down the simple food molecules such as sugar and release the energy that they contain um, so that it continues to be able to function and produce what it needs to. So the energy is stored in the cells. Um, the analogy or what it can co be compared to is something like a bank account or a savings account. Um, during photosynthesis, we know that the plants capture energy from the sunlight and then they save it in the form of carbohydrates, which are those sugars and starches, so that glucose. Um, and just like when we eat, um, we are adding nutrients and energy to our body, but it gets stored for when we need to use it later. So then when cells need the energy, they withdraw it or they start to use it by breaking down the carbohydrates in the process of respiration. And through that chemical reaction and then breaking down the carbohydrates, it releases that energy so it can be used. Now, you may hear the word respiration and think of breathing, um, but the respiration that we are talking about is a little bit different. Um, there are two meanings to respiration. So the first one is that meaning for breathing, um, which is moving the air in and out of our lungs. And then the respiration process that takes place inside the cells is what we call cellular respiration, um, because it obviously is a different process than the type of respiration where we breathe. Um, so breathing brings in oxygen but um, cellular respiration, like it needs that oxygen. So there are two stages of respiration, just like with photosynthesis, um, respiration is a two stage process. And our Ed Puzzle today actually, I think breaks it down into three stages because they add a little bit more information um, but when we are going over like our review and our other activities, um, when we compare photosynthesis and respiration, we're just going to focus on these two stages. So the first stage takes place in the cytoplasm of the organism cells. So remember that cytoplasm is like that gel-like fluid um, that's holding those organelles together, allowing them to kind of float around and move um, in the cells. So the molecules of glucose, which is that sugar, are kind of in that cytoplasm and floating around as well. They get broken down into smaller molecules. Um, the key here is to note that oxygen is not involved in this process or in this stage, um, and only a small amount of energy is released. So you're just breaking down the molecules right now. Nothing too serious has to happen. Um, and only a little bit of energy is released. The second stage of respiration happens in the mitochondria. So those smaller molecules um, enter the mitochondria and then they get broken down um, into even smaller particles and pieces. 
then through that process, there's chemical reactions that take place that require oxygen this time. And as those reactions occur, there's a great deal of energy that's released. Um, it's a more complex process. There's more um, materials being combined. And so it has a greater reaction and release of energy. Um, so this kind of explains why the mitochondria are sometimes called the powerhouse of the cell. This is where that energy is released for the cell to be able to use. Now, besides energy, um, two other products of respiration are carbon dioxide and water. Um, and then these products diffuse out of the cell. So they move from that higher concentration to lower concentration. And then in most animals, um, the carbon dioxide and water leave the body during exhalation, which means like breathing out. Um, and so when you breathe in, we take in that oxygen, which is considered that raw material for respiration. And that oxygen is needed to start and help the process of respiration. And then when we breathe out, we release the carbon dioxide and, wa and water, um, which are the products of respiration. And if you remember, um, photosynthesis plants need carbon dioxide and water to start, whereas respiration um, produces carbon dioxide and water, so you can start to see how that cycle happens. So the respiration equation, um, you guys should have a picture of this on your notes, and um, like we said, respiration occurs in complex steps, so there's multiple stages. Um, this overall process, we again can write out as an equation, just like we did with photosynthesis. Our raw materials, or those materials that go into respiration, are on the left. So sugar, um, which is that glucose, and then oxygen. And then that arrow represents um, how that chemical reaction happens and when energy is released, and then the products or what is produced is on the right, and that's carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Now comparing photosynthesis and respiration, photosynthesis um, involves carbon dioxide and water being used to produce sugars and oxygen, and then during respiration, the sugar glucose and oxygen are used to produce carbon dioxide and water. So photosynthesis and respiration can be thought of as opposite processes. Um, and you can think of them as a cycle where the products of photosynthesis are then used um, in the process of respiration. And then respiration produces carbon dioxide and water which is needed in photosynthesis, and it's a continual cycle. So together, these two processes form a cycle that keep the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide fairly constant in Earth's atmosphere, because animals and organisms um, like us, we would breathe out carbon dioxide, we're breathing in oxygen, plants, are producing oxygen um, for us to breathe in the air, and then we put the carbon dioxide back in the air, and usually there's a balance unless something else disturbs that. Now, moving on to fermentation, um, our notes just kind of briefly go over this. You will have an Ed Puzzle tomorrow. Um, that walks you through the process of fermentation a little bit more and talks about that as well. Um, but fermentation is another process that cells um, use to obtain energy. So through this, um, cells are able to obtain the energy without using oxygen. Um, so the organisms obtain their energy through fermentation, which is an energy releasing process that does not require oxygen. Um, and then the amount of energy released from each sugar molecule during fermentation is lower than the energy released during respiration. So it's still a process, but it's not 
like the main source of energy that cells would need. There are two types of fermentation that we're going to talk about then um, and just kind of briefly go over. And again, our Ed Puzzle will go into more details about these as well. Um, but the first type is considered alcoholic fermentation. Um, so this is when yeast and other single-celled organisms break down sugars. Um, and it's called alcoholic fermentation because alcohol is one of the products. So sugars and yeast combine together. Um, bakers use this when they're making bread and other like pastries. And then even brewers um, use it as well to get that reaction. And then carbon dioxide is a product and a small amount of energy is also released. The second type of fermentation, um, you guys have probably experienced this before, takes place in our body. Um, so think of a time when you ran as fast as you could, um, as long as you could, and your leg muscles started like cramping up or getting tight and you were breathing really, really fast. Um, because your cells started to lack oxygen, your body couldn't produce the amount of oxygen you needed. Um, you're starting to breathe quickly and fermentation occurs. So the fermentation is what supplied your cells with the energy, but a product of this type of fermentation is an acid known as lactic acid. And as that acid builds up um, from that fermentation, giving you the energy to continue running, you start to feel that painful sensation or like a cramp in your muscles. Um, so that's when you need to like start resting so that acid can reduce and your body can get the oxygen it needs um, to get back to that stable homeostasis. Once you guys get to this point, um, you are done with your 3.4 notes. Have a good day. <laughs>